Wellington City Council may have to use debt to foot a 312,000, oh, 312,500, sorry, bill for raised pedestrian crossings on Thorndon Quay. Council documents state New Zealand Transport Agencies advised last week it will no longer fund raised safety platforms following the government's policy statement on land transport. The document has been considered by the Council's Regulatory Processes Committee and says this applies not only to projects in design or development, but also to projects in the construction phase, such as Thorndon Quay. The Wellington City Council is planning for five raised crossings on Thorndon Quay alone. Well, joining me is ACT a Local Government Spokesperson. Welcome back to the show, Cameron Luxton. Cam. Hi. G'day, Leah. Hey. Nice to be with you on this issue. I know, look, we all we all love a raised crossing, uh, not. <laughs> a raised what? crossing, otherwise ra- known as a speed bump to, to a us speed, ladies, speed right? bump. What is the obsession <laughs> yeah. with these with these raised pedestrian crossings? Oh, look, what's the obsession with it? I couldn't answer that. I mean, they are, they're raised bumps whether they have a pedestrian crossing or not. It's a whole lot of concrete um, and, and it's supposed to be slowing everybody down and we're trying to get people moving. But these, you know, like Wellington City Council, I mean, yeah. the staff there should have been getting the message. Like yes. you just laid out, NZTAs no longer funding these uh, raised safety platforms. But it's not really a surprise. The government's been indicating for a long time, you know, with three, things like the, the government policy statement and the pulling back on let's get Wellington moving. Mm. So they should have been getting this message a lot sooner than they have. But... They don't seem to have. So I think, you know, Wellington City Council needs to show some leadership and yeah. actually tell their officials, we're not doing this. We're going to save a whole lot of money. I'm seeing 625000 could be saved by not putting in these uh, raised speed tables and instead just sticking with the signalled traffic lights that have been planned. But, mm. I mean, at the moment, people in Wellington, 18.5% rate hike. Yeah, you know, they don't... Yeah. I can... I can even, up and down the country, people are facing massive rate hikes. And, mm. you know, so everyone, I'm sure, in the country can empathise with Wellington going off and spend, borrowing money, in fact, to spend on things like this when, you know, up and down the country, we're facing massive rate hikes. Oh, I mean, and was I right in saying that were they looking at five of these? And are they, are they you mentioned 600,000, are they, I thought they were about 300k each, No. Yeah, so I heard, so, so yeah, I just stumbled across the story and just went, I can't believe <laughs> that they'd be this crazy. So from my understanding, there's five raised crossings that have been planned along Thorndon Quay. Um, wow. And there's already construction happening to make them signal, like signalised, you know, put, this, put some lights up there, yeah. um, which if they continue to do, um, you know, they can continue to do that. But if they hold back on the raised speed tables, they could save, you know, up to or knowing the price of that blows out on construction projects, um, 625000 So Unbelievable. Yeah, I think. Well, but this um, is, and, and, and on those price blowouts, you know, earlier yeah. in the year, I actually got the Transport and Infrastructure Select Committee here in Parliament to do an investigation on one such raised speed table in Auckland. And yes, it was the infamous, yeah, infamous half a million dollar uh, raised <laughs> speed table, $490,000 spent uh, delayed, you know, there was traffic management happening there for months. Uh, community consultation was lacking. I think they really went for the gold-plated option when they didn't need to. <laughs> Eye-watering prices, right? But this is part of the problem um, yeah. that this government's getting into fix. And, you know, Brooke Van Velden is doing a review of the health and safety uh, laws in New Zealand which will lead through uh, to some tra- temporary traffic management changes because New Zealanders are sick of seeing the oh. incredible costs on everything, right? Every yeah, time well, we try they, to build anything. Yeah, well, they And, they and I just wanted to say that, that... Yeah. Yeah, they, well, this, this raised speed table in Auckland, 35% of the cost was spent on traffic management. Oh, so, I mean... When we, yeah, it's, this is part of the plan. So we've got to get on top of this sort of stuff, you know, doing a review into health and safety to get some clear and sensible uh, traffic management plans that are actually proportionate to the risk will mm. do a lot to save money when it comes to building these things. That, um, that one that you were, you were speaking about in Auckland, that was in, uh, uh, you know, Greylin, uh, which is, yeah. you know... Williamson quite- Ave. Yeah, which, you yeah. know, I mean, it's not quite Ponsonby, but it, it, it is quite the place, you know. So, um, <laughs> they, you know, yeah, they, well, they, 
<laughs> people don't want to be slowed. Yeah, you know, people. Yeah, you know, but I mean, the, this is actually raises a point about it that that we canvassed in select committee. You know, the choice of location um, led to a large uh, uh, bill in to do with the water, so the drain water. Right? You know, you build a, you put a speed bump at the mm. bottom of the hill and cut off all the water's ability to go off the pavement. So they spent a whole lot of money on the stormwater element of this. So if there'd been a better, you know, I believe if there'd been a better design up front, we could have saved a lot of a lot of pain yeah. and money. Hey, Cam, yeah. you mentioned kind of at the beginning about, you know, what, what the council uh, don't seem to be getting with the program. That feels like some don't seem to think there's a change of government and they're still in, in that in kind of Labour's road to zero fantasy and is that mm. the feeling is that what mm. you're kind of s- trying to say yeah i think the road to zero uh policy although it's got a great sounding name and a and a great uh you know it's an aspirational goal and that's all mm. well and good but the effects on the ground are disrupting communities and actually it's not getting the outcomes as it was promised i'm thinking actually of in my um, home area of the Western mm. Bay of Plenty, between a Portiki and Kati Kati on State Highway Two, um, yeah, they've been planning to put these they're colloquially known as uh, cheese slices or cheese graters, you know, oh, the, the median yeah. the, down the middle of the road, which you know look makes sense in somewhere where there's two lanes, um, yes. where there's not a whole lot of resident residents and businesses living along uh, that stretch of uh, road, but on State Highway Two there are. Uh, multiple feeder roads with people living on them, businesses trying to get onto the road. It's cutting traffic off. And the worst part is it's only a single lane road. So if mm. anything goes wrong, people just can't uh, get around um, something that's happened. Uh, they have to drive extra kilometres to get home or to work, which isn't really very productive, which is what we're trying to do. But it yeah. was all brought about because of the last government's obsession with the road to zero um, at all costs. Mm. So yeah. I think you know, the message is slowly getting through. NZTAs said that they're going to do a review of that stretch of highway, having the median barriers, okay. and rightfully so. The residents out there were were, were pretty forceful in their uh, opposition to it, and I think it's a good outcome to at least start the process of review. But like yeah. I say, this is an example of this government slowly turning the tide on this, getting yeah. Labor's uh, you know, um, policies that might have sounded nice, but got us in a whole lot of debt, a whole lot of inflation and putting barriers up in front of New Zealanders trying to go about their everyday life.